Yeah. 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 in Belgium is um as Gary it's says it give it more exposure as well and somewhere as where you wouldn't be held as it well. It gives it that and it, and it gives you opportunities to to tour these places, um Belgium and Holland and France and, 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 and the likes where they would like us to go in the summer. And but I think as, as, as Gary alluded to there man it, it, the, the people see something that comes from other shores as it were. I think here is is somehow more exotic. And, and somehow more like exciting it's to more them. romantic I saw um, that to them it's like so I, I, hopefully um, the, the, the the same effect will take place over there as much as it's not something that people are used to it's not something they see all the time as a band or not a band that they can see live maybe two or three times a year if they want to um, so I would like to think that, that it'll have the same effect there and also the fact that um, the, 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 the labels in Belgium should expose us to some fine premium strength lager. <laughs> I'm Greg uh, from Exash Records. We are a brand new records label based in Belgium and specialized in rock and roll, psychedelic and garage music. Uh, the project start end of last year, but we officially launched it in four months ago. Um, the idea was born when I was the drummer of a rock psychedelic band called Morning Cities. I really wanted to help bands to emerge and give more visibility. Uh, for our first step, we have been lucky to take the plunge with uh, Elikan. They personify what I was looking for for my first band. The music that makes you traveling with a ram, trippy psych rock with an incredible energy. Uh, I discovered uh, Elikan watching the lineup of Liverpool Psych Fest 2013. Uh, you know the small uh, names at the bottom of the poster? I admit that is one of my way to discover uh, music. I look at the bottom of festival poster and this is where you find Jim. To show you uh, their new EP, Gina, uh, released in digital and vinyl. This is a limited edition of 300 hand num numbered copies. Uh, I hope music lovers uh, will keep their their ears open on that record. Uh, those who do not yet know Elikan will be surprised. And in addition of being fucking good, they are addictive. Uh, you listen once and you want to do it again and again. Uh, even uh, a 9 minutes 30 second song is not long enough. Helicon are a five, sometimes six, sometimes seven piece it's neo psychedelic rock band from East Kilbride and Glasgow. It was Gary and I were had, be, had been just sort of casually playing guitars together for a while, and, and 
Gary's wife Laura um, was playing with us as well, playing violins and keys and harmonicas and the like. And then um, when we started putting band together, um, Gary Sharp's a, 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 an old mate of yours from, um, from our school days. And we've known Mark for years as well, but Mark wasn't our original bass player. We had a, another guy, Stephen Jimison, at the time. And um, we were playing with a couple of guitars, and Laura was playing keyboards and synth, and, 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 uh, and Jimmy was on bass at the time. And we needed a, a, a drummer, and he happened, to know, um, he happened to know Martin, so he brought Martin along. That was the first time we'd ever met him, we didn't actually know him before it. Um, biggest mistake we ever made. Yeah. But, uh, fucking stuck now. <laughs> 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 the, 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 a wisp of a boy, he didn't even have a beard at that time. <laughs> and, uh, and <laughs> He's a man. <laughs> and, um, and then we were jamming like that for a wee bit, and uh, it just kind of... <clears throat> we knew right from the outset the kind of music we wanted to make, um, and what we wanted to do, um, which was just kind of, you know, you kind of, we've always had that sort of philosophy where if if, if you're not, if, if you can't buy or hear the music that you want, then just fucking go and make it. At least you know that when you go home at night and you've been to rehearsals and you're fucking knackered, you've been working all day, or we're away and we're playing gigs here, there and everywhere, you can still go home and, and look yourself in the mirror and go, do you know what? We done well there, man. We, we made music that we wanted to make, we've, we've, we've recorded records that, that we ourselves would buy, and and we've done it without, I'm not, we're not selling massive amounts of records or anything like that, any stretch of mission, but you've done it without trying to, to, to write music you think will sell, you're only writing music that you want to hear, do you know what I mean? And when we, start, when we started off as well, I always just wanted to have one vinyl record in my band. Definitely. Now we've got two now, so this will be the third one. Right. And nah, it's like, I can imagine that when we started this out as brawls six, seven, eight years ago, whatever it was, that we would have new kind of things of actually having a record label who are willing to put money in and pay for us to... <laughs> no time we've ever really done anything that's mainstream or, or commercial to be honest but it's, it's no because we've got a problem with it, it's just no what we're about really. Um, but even for example for them down to do gigs down south or whatever, we're not a band that turn around and say well, we want paid X amount of money and make all these stupid demands. If we can break, uh, like, get enough cash to pretty much get down, get drunk, then we're there. Do you know what I mean? We, we don't really care about anything like that, to be honest. I think we're maybe too old and wise to be bothered with stuff like that. Uh, I, I, I tend to lose a lot of respect for, for even bands at your level and peers and, and, and other people that I see when you start to see them formulate their little plans for world domination. Um, so that's not to say that you lack ambition and you don't want to get further all the time. But when, 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 when it becomes the sole purpose of what you're doing, then I think, I, I think that, that people will buy into your music, and I buy into your music because it's real, and I think the minute that you chase a goal, then the goal determines the music make rather than your, your, your genuine philosophy and beliefs in, in, in what you're doing, and that's why try to embrace that mainstream thing is just something that we'll, we'll, we'll never, never, even, never, 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 never entertain, never entertain. Did you hear your music? The, 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 the problem with music, with, with music sharing, and I think the controversy behind it, I think a lot of that was, was propaganda for the music industry because they were so fucking lazy and slow to realise how the world was changing. They thought, no, 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 we've got a set up business model here and you're all fucking do what we say. And yet, kids coming through and when they mentioned new technologies, we're like, ah, aye, right, that'll be the case. And, and they went and did their own thing. So, I think a lot of that controversy and, and, and the, the hullabaloo over, um, over music sharing was created to, to, to scare people and to, to, to create control. And, and quite simply, I understand if you're fucking Metallica or the Rolling Stones, I understand the fear that they have, that they're. they're um, monopoly. That empire will crumble, and, and you know what I mean. They might not make a million pound that week. We've got shit we mud up. Aye, aye. But what music sharing did? Even, even if even if you remove the band from it, what what music sharing has done for me is it's opened my eyes and, my, and broadened my horizons to music I would have never heard. You know, I'm not even talking about. Play, we've played to audience. We can play to the audiences and. and, and all across Europe, and, and, and we've done interviews with magazines in Australia and all this kind of stuff. 
there's no, there's no danger. These people would have paid the slightest bit of interest to us or even heard of us without the internet and music sharing taking place there. So, and, but not only that, I, the bands like the Brian Jones Time Massacre, they would create an album, find it out online, download it for nothing for a second of time, and then see if you want to buy it. You love it. And, buy it and buy the record and, and, and buy the CD. And that's what you do, you bring, you would download it, but you didn't just want the MP3, you wanted to buy the vinyl, you wanted to get the gate pulled sleeve. You, so, I actually found myself buying more Brian Jones Town Massacre records than I maybe would have because I would fall in love with the album that I heard for free and then want to get all the paraphernalia that goes around it. So I think it draws people on the show. Ah, yeah, it's, it's an amazing yeah. 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 I think it's like basically got back to the punk era where everyone's basically in a way gave the record companies a big fuck you. And the fact that they're turning around, we'll do it ourselves, we'll release it ourselves. Smaller labels, vinyl, it's a resurgence of vinyl. It can only be a good thing as well, I think. That kind of exposure online. And then that's just going to get overtaken by all the bullshit it again, do, isn't it? It could do. Like everything else, record store day. I hope crap. not, I hope not. But well, but tonight, for example, tonight, the tonight we're playing across the road and we know firsthand of people travelling from all different parts of the UK to come here and see us tonight. And that wouldn't have happened without music sharing. You know what I mean? That, that, those people would not have got access to our music, enjoyed our music, connected with us through our social media, and then gone out, bought t-shirts that we, we, we sell on merchandise, bought the records that we make, buy the downloads that we do, and they all do it through on their own free will, because they can get the music for nothing if they want, because they want to support the band, because they want to hear more of what you can do, and they know and understand and appreciate that, that, is, that it takes money to be able to do that. But I think, the music that we have and the genre that we're in as well, it's also in a, a, a it's a slightly older audience, I suppose, that, that appeals to. So there's almost a they've got a bit more empathy for you, I suppose, whereas I guess if you're if you're appealing to a much younger uh, demographic and, and, and market then that I, I, I suppose they now see music as, as utterly transient and it's just something you, you, you touch for a short period of time and leave. Whereas the crowd we appeal to is something they want to hold and cherish for a long time. Kind of known when we go about as a bunch of sort of friendly guys, aren't we? Really, huh? like supposedly a bit intimidating looking, but <laughs> <laughs> we just go and we go on with everybody. We don't. They're not some asshole band. We played with so many. Sit up there in the corner of ourselves with our shades on inside all night, trying to look like the Velvet Underground or something. Do you know what I mean? That's just. We've been commenting to us by other bands about. Just only a, a couple of weeks ago we were talking to somebody that's thinking that actually happened that's just because they, they hate the whole uh, separation that goes on at sort of gigs and festivals and this kind of stuff and they're just pretty much getting sick of it. Um, and I think their attitude to not just this, just their life is like, we just go out and have a laugh. And most I mean? of the people that come to the festivals that we play at, especially in England, like Manchester or Liverpool, we seem to be in Manchester more than we seem to be in Glasgow. It's like, it's all our mates really, isn't it? They live there, so you go and see them all and you just... You don't want to sit backstage in some wee daft room with us. What? You'd yeah, rather just go out and meet your pals and talk to them. Never sit backstage, them. never fucking sit there. Always, if there's a support band on or something before, we'd always stand them. and watch them. And don't be rude and don't go and watch you for three bands on a slot. And because there's a band on before you, the amount of bands you played with, they just sit in their dressing room until it's their stage don't time. Them. And so on stage is after. Metal bands who leave as soon as they finish their Aye, set and all. I know. I have a wee bit of respect for the bands they're people, playing man. with. And These boys have all put in as much graft as you. It, it, so it, 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 don't sit in some stupid wee second room because it makes you look cool when you walk on stage. Saying that, uh, say that, we'll all get sunglasses at night, we'll all be sitting backstage and going, I'll be fucking around right here. The first man to the room is sitting in the room. That'll be the Fuck you all. I'm going to be doing this for long enough now. 
Sei lá o lugar da mexida. Segue na frente, na frente. Só vai dizer que é aquele americano.
Oh, 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 I'm John Paul, I'm 38 years old. I play lead guitar and vocalist in Helicon. And I'm the eye candy of the band. Uh, my name's Gary Sharp, I'm a guitarist in Helicon. I stay in East Kilbride, which is just, just outside Glasgow. Um, for my main job, I work in education. And I'm the eye candy in the band. <laughs> Hi, my name's Gary, I'm the guitarist in Helicon, and I'm the eye candy in the band. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm saying hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Martin. Uh, I play drums in Helicon. Uh, I'm a joiner, a student. I work in a couple bars. So I'm a greedy bastard. And I'm Die Candy. Hello, I'm Mark. I play bass in Helicon. And I <laughs> am. <laughs> you get your room in it. <laughs> Most definitely the eye candy in the band.